you hate the thought of working past 55 or 60? Do you hate not being able to live the life you deserve today? Do you hate not knowing what your financial future looks like? It's time to stop doing what you hate. Here's your host, Mr. Harold Green. Hello, everybody. This is Harold Green of Bright Street Financial Group. Aloha, and uh, I hope you are having a fantastic day. It is time to stop doing what you hate. And uh, really excited to be bringing today's show to you folks. I'm just exciting. So I hope the show finds you winning, winning, winning and overcoming and succeeding because uh, I believe that everything you set your hands to shall prosper if you have made it up in your mind that uh, that's the way you're going to live. So I want to talk to you guys about something that's um, that's been really weighing on my heart, something that's been weighing on my mind and uh, something that I've kind of talked about in some of my other shows. And um, I'll get into it in a little bit, but the title of today's show is Fight For It. And <laughs> it's, it's tough. And right now I'm traveling on business, seeing some family, seeing some clients, you know, doing some business here and there uh, in a couple of different states. And uh, so I'm not in Hawaii recording this show. I'm actually in Alabama right now and uh, recording this show. And in my travels and just... In life over the last, I don't know, couple of years, it's becoming more and more evident that I'm seeing a lot of people in life that they look like a, a defeated people. They look like dejected people. They look like demoralized people. And so I want to talk to you about this, the state of our country, the state of people's minds right now. And so are you ready to get it? Because this is going to help you. This, I believe, is going to seriously help you. You know, I'm not just doing this for my health. I'm not doing this because I want new clients. I'm doing this because I want to see you succeed and accomplish everything that you set your hands to. So are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? One, two, three. Let's get it. All right, fight for it. This is interesting. Right now, what's going on in the market is you see a lot of, like I talked about in my last show, capitulation. People giving up on the market. People giving up on their financial plans. People giving up on a lot of things. People giving up on their marriages. People giving up on their kids. People giving up on just their jobs. <laughs> What's interesting, I think last month they came out with a, with a number that showed, I think, like 4 million people quit their jobs. And, you know, I'm sitting there on the plane One of the places I had to go sitting there on the plane. And I'm like, where are all these people coming from? Like, why are the TSA lines like out the door? And I sent a text to a good buddy of mine and and I said, (laughs) because some people were getting kind of rowdy and stuff. And, you know, they had been drinking a little bit. Well, probably a lot because I saw them in the first class lounge just kind of downing these free uh, <laughs> these free drinks, and so they got on the plane. They were in a they were in a happy place, but they were a little bit loud or whatnot. And I was joking with my friend. I said, you know, before, you know, I was against people. Uh, I was against them banning alcohol on planes and banning alcohol in the airport. I said, no, I, I probably am all for it, just because people, you know, they just they they checked out. I want to talk to you guys what happens when people check out. But it was crazy, and I joked with them. I said, it's probably time to start flying private, and that's eventually where I'm headed. But it was just one of those things where I have to go through this process. And 4 million people quit their jobs last month. For, for what reason? Was it to find a better job? Some maybe. But if you look at the number of jobs that were created, it wasn't that many jobs created. And so, you know, the estimates came in, it was okay. But you still got a lot of people that are quitting their jobs and just kind of like going back into, you know, checking out. They don't know what to do. They're tired of what they're doing. Talk to one of the TSA guys and he's like, yo... I said, how y'all doing, man? Because I like to talk to people. You guys know me. I'll talk to anybody, anywhere, about anything. I said, how are you guys doing, man? I said, you guys look crazy busy. He said, you know what? This is a very hard job. He said, we are so shorthanded right now. It's unbelievable. People are quitting. The pay is not that much. And they just they just check out. And people go back and they get on unemployment. And they just kind of like, just kind of live like that. So you got millions of people that are just going in the airports or traveling. They're going all these different places. And they've Pretty much some of them, most of them, I would say not most of them, but a lot of them have just checked out on life and they've given up because it's too hard. And that's a sad statistic of where we are. And so a lot of times in my life, when I was growing up, I was bullied a lot here, you know, a lot. 
and I didn't like it. I was picked on. You know, I had family members that made fun of me about stuff. And it's one thing to get picked on at school, but it's another thing to have family members kind of, that's supposed to be your safe zone. But I'm not even going to get into that. But it caused me to have a low self-esteem and and not understanding how important it was to to fight for the things that you wanted in life. So I think I told a story. My coaches were like, you're a quitter. You're never going to be anything in life. You're never going to get anywhere. You're always quitting. You know, one of uh, when I was in the military, one of the guys said, you're going to be dead by 30 years old. The way you're going right now at 30, you're going to be dead. And the truth is, is by the time I was 30, I had my own business. So there you go. And now I'm almost 50. So thank God I'm still here. But there's a, a secret to the sauce. And the secret of the sauce to me was learning how to fight for the things that I said I wanted. As a believer in God and a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, that's something that, that I fight for. And who am I fighting with? I'm not fighting with people that are against me for my beliefs and my faith. I'm not fighting with them. Because people can believe whatever, whatever they want. And I can believe whatever I want. But you know who I'm fighting with? I'm fighting with myself. I'm fighting with myself to make sure I stay on track with what I believe and what I know. It's a battle every single day. And it's something that I'm not going to give up on. I don't want to. I pray that I don't. But it's a fight. I got to fight for what I want. When it comes to my marriage, I had plenty of chances to get divorced. You know, probably 30, 40. (laughs) Tough times that make you want to say, hey, I'm out of here. But my wife and I decided to, you know, we'd get mad. We'd fight with each other. And, you know, we were fighting for what we thought was right, you know, and she's arguing with me. I'm arguing with her. I'm trying to, I'm trying to present my case and she's trying to present her case. And sometimes we didn't see eye to eye, but at the end of the day, if we did something wrong within the next day or two, or sometimes even the next week, depending on how bad it was, we would reconcile and come back and say, you know what, I'm sorry. And sometimes I would apologize even if it wasn't my fault because I wanted to, I wanted to set the stage for God to speak to her, you know, God to work in her life and for God to say, Hey, you're wrong on this. And sometimes it would take him like a week just to get through to her because she <laughs> she felt that strongly about what her position was. And he had to massage and massage and massage. But while he was massaging her heart and her mind, I had to step back and shut up and just do my thing and do what I knew was the right thing to do. I knew I wasn't wrong, but I knew it was the right thing to do to go and make amends in order to set the stage and for things to get better. I had to fight. I had to fight in my own mind. I had to fight against my feelings. I had to fight. Because here's the thing about not fighting. If you never learn how to fight, you are always going to become the victim of circumstance. I'm going to say that again. If you never learn how to fight, you're always going to become the victim of your circumstances. And that's why a lot of people are defeated. That's why a lot of people are dejected. That's why a lot of people feel demoralized. Because a lot of times they give up. They quit. 50% of marriages end in divorce. Over 50% of new businesses, more than that, within the first five years, they go out. And here's the interesting thing that I learned on the way here. I'm always studying. I never quit learning. I never quit studying. I never quit trying to better myself. And I'm always learning, listening to podcast shows, listening to audiobooks. I don't care what it is. Knowledge is power if it's used the right way. Knowledge is power if it's used the right way. It can be empowering. And so I learned there's a difference between a strategy and a goal. A lot of people have goals, but they have no strategy. And to take it a step further, this guy was talking about non-negotiables. Like, these are standards that I have in my life. And he was like, if you set standards, then you don't need to set goals. For me, I don't want to fly coach ever again. I'm, I'm graduating that. I've Actually, I've graduated that. It is a standard for me. My wife said, You know, we're talking about all of these trips we need to take and all these places we need to go and all these things we need to do. She's like, you're going to fly first class on all of those trips? And I said, yeah, that's my standard now. It is not a goal. It is a non-negotiable for me. And I said, if the flight don't have first class, I'm canceling it. (laughs) And we're going to figure out a different flight because that's a standard for me. Because when I'm flying, I'm using that time to study. I'm using that time to write out strategy, write out my notes I'm not sitting there praying and hoping, oh God, I just hope this thing ends soon. I just hope this is over with soon so I can get to where I'm getting. That's that's a crazy waste of time. I'd rather be sitting there taking that four or five thousand dollars, whatever it cost, and then sitting there and figuring out and honing in on my strategy. Because if I do that, then the cost of the ticket is not going to be a problem. A lot of people just say, it's not worth it. It's not it's not worth it. It depends on what you're doing with that time. 
and that peace of mind and that comfort, what are you doing with that? I'm not just sitting there watching movies the whole trip. Some people would do that. And if that's you, that's fine. Maybe you're on vacation. But I use these times to better myself and to get myself to a better spot, to get myself to a better place. I was having lunch with my sister and my mom yesterday, you know, and, I, and I told her what, what I'm up to. And my sister just looked at me. She said, wow. She said, she said you're on a whole different level. That's, that's something I don't, I, I don't know if I can get there. I said, so you can if you do what I'm suggesting and you do the things that I share with you that I do. Same things that I tell my clients. I said, I'm not telling you anything different than I'm telling my clients. I said, I don't have a special set of data that I share with everybody else and another set of data that I share with my clients. I said, I share with everybody the same thing. Because one of the things you got to understand is in the investment world, it is extremely hard. I don't think people understand how hard this is. Some people think you open a brokerage account and you just buy stocks and they go up. Yeah, I'm happy. They go down. Yeah, I'm sad. That's why you have a lot of capitulation. People don't know what they're doing. They think they know, right? But they really don't know. They think they know, but they don't know. Because as soon as something goes bad, then what do you do? That's why becoming a pilot is hard. <laughs> because anybody can, fly, anybody can fly a plane. Flying a plane is relatively easy. I'm not, I'm not kidding you. It is relatively easy. Everything has been so automated. The control systems, the, the flight systems, you know, they have been automated to a large degree. But here's the thing. When something goes wrong, what do you do? How do you course correct? And as a pilot, you have to course correct. You have to figure out what to do in order to solve the problem because people are depending on you. You have to take that same approach in life. Your kids depend on you. Your wife depends on you. Your husband depends on you. Your community depends on you. You got to fight for these things. And so you have to look at it and say, all right, am I going to be a victim of my circumstance or am I going to be a victor of a battle won? Right? Am I going to win this battle? Am I going to win this battle? Right? Because I'm telling you, I'm going to tell you straight up, if you don't ever learn how to win the battles that you face on a day-to-day basis, you either learn how to fight and win or you give up and you don't fight them again. And then you become a victim of your circumstance. Now, I used to want to love to help people. I used to love to want to help everybody and, and just do the best thing I can for everybody. But recently, I made a decision. My new starting minimum is half a million dollars to work with me. That's my new minimum. And here's why. Time after time after time after time after time that I've taken on clients that did not meet my minimum, a large majority of them, I would say about 80%, didn't follow through on the things that I was saying that they needed to do. And here's why this is important. My hourly rate, if I were to calculate out what I'm worth in an hour, it's more than $1,000 an hour. I would suggest it's even like $2,500 an hour. Based on the amount of time that I spend trading, the time I spend planning, the time I spend meeting with clients. If I break that all down, I'm not talking about how many, how many days a year I work. I don't go about how many days a year I work. It's more like how many hours do I put into what I do? And it doesn't have to be on a, you know, like how many hours a day? Because today I might work an hour doing a show. Tomorrow I might work five hours, depending on putting, you know, if I'm putting strategy together, reviewing cases, reviewing portfolios. It just depends. And so I thought about it and I said, if I take on a client who has an account that has $100,000 in it, and not, I'm not bragging or anything like that, and my fee is 2%, that's $2,000 that I would make on that account for the entire year the entire year. And how many hours do I have to spend? Well, based on regulatory responsibilities and all the things that you have to do with the client, it can be upwards of 10 hours. 10 hours. You have to treat every single client the same. You have to do the same compliance for every single client. So if you take on a small account that's going to make you $200, you're losing $29,800 a year. And so I said, you know what? I love my clients. And I'm putting together a system to look at whether or not, depending on who those clients are, if it's a family member or a child of a client, I have my exception. So it's half a million dollars, but it's with exception. I can make exceptions to my rule, depending on whether or not I think it's a great fit, depending on the situation. And so I have the discretion now to do that. And I think that's going to save me a lot of time, a lot of hassle, and a lot of headache. And here's and because here's the thing, a lot of people will come to me and say, Harold, I want this, I want that, I want this, I want that. But in all actuality, every time we have a meeting, the goals change or the idea changes. Why? 
Because what I found is that many people won't fight or stand up for what they believe because they're too busy trying to fit in or go with the latest idea. And that's a sad situation. You either fight or you capitulate. And if you don't know the word capitulate means, it means to surrender, to give in, to fold, to quit, right? Some people have quit on their investment strategy because they think things don't look too good. The market is down, but not every single stock in the market is down. And so when I was meeting with this advisor and then we, you know, we're just talking and, and looking at strategy and things like that, I said, you know, the market is down, but not every stock in the market is down. And we just kind of went through strategy and we went through just different things or whatnot. And we just looked at performance and we looked at different sectors and we looked at different trends and different things like that. And it's like, that's how you keep your portfolios from being down 30 to 40%. And a lot of clients are saying like, hey, I thought the goal was for you to make me X number of dollars as yes, certain percentages a year. I said, but when times go bad, my job is to make sure you don't lose no more than a certain amount because that's an art too. <laughs> it's not how much you make, it's how much of what you make you get to keep. That's very important. So if we made 100% last year, and I lost 100% this year, we're back to zero again. That's a bad situation to be in. And thankfully, I don't have any clients that were, you know, were like that. Because you have to rotate the portfolios. You have to look at the trends. You have to look at the information. You got to read some of the tea leaves sometimes. And you have to just kind of go back and look at your strategy and say, okay, where do I need to make adjustments in my strategy? And this is all part of fighting. Or we become a victim of circumstance. Yeah, the market is down, but it'll get better someday. If I said that to my clients, I'd get fired. My clients see the trades that are popping off in their portfolios all the time. If you're a client of mine, <laughs> you will see trades at least three or four times a quarter, or if not once a quarter, depending on your strategy, inside your portfolio. I'm not just going to sit there, hold what we got, and then wait until things get better. Why? Because I'm fighting. fighting. I'm fighting for the things that you said that you want to achieve in life, and you've entrusted me to help you fight for it. And here's something very important. If you have people on your team that check out on you, that quit on you, that won't fight for you, that's the difference between one or two things. I was in the military, and here's what happens when your teammates check out. You can and probably will die. And that's a very serious thing. Special operator people, they know that. You cannot check out. You have to fight or people are going to die. And that's how I feel about my clients. Yeah, we're not killing it in the market right now. We're not losing everything either. But at the same time, I'm fighting and my clients are fighting. And so I don't want to take on anybody again who don't want to fight. I don't want to take on anybody who is okay capitulating. I don't want to do that anymore. It's not fun. It's miserable. Because when I get up every day at four, five, three, whatever it is to fight, I want my clients, whenever situations come up, I want them to fight too. When that coworker says something stupid, and you know deep down inside it doesn't make any sense, you need to fight that. You can't capitulate and say, well, yeah, my coworker said this, and oh yeah, my brother said this, oh yeah, my friend said this. If you aren't willing to fight, you gotta roll. We gotta part ways. I want people that are willing to fight for what they say they want, for what they say they need. Otherwise, <laughs> you're gonna end up defeated, dejected, demoralized. I want you to be a victor of a battle won. I want you to share with me the things where you are winning in life. And if you're fighting any battles financially or whatever it might be, if you're a client, just call me and we can talk through it. I can't help you fight an invisible fight. I can't help you fight an enemy that, that I can't see. We ain't gonna win that way. And so, therefore, I want you to take this message and look at your life and look at the things where you feel like you want to give up on. Now, I'm going to tell you straight up. If you are fighting a fight that you shouldn't be fighting in the first place, you're going to have to analyze that because a lot of times we're fighting battles that are not even ours. You can't fight other people's battle for them. And that's what I was thinking in my mind where I want to help a lot of people. I want to help a lot of people. Yeah, that's great and noble, but I was becoming people's God. And I'm going to tell you guys something real quick. The fastest way to insanity and to losing your peace of mind is trying to fight other people's fight and trying to become other people's God. I told my sister that I said, you know, the most powerful word in the English dictionary is no. Not yes, but no. 
You got to learn how to say no. When people ask me for things, sometimes I have to say no. Why? Because if I'm always capitulating and giving in, I'm never going to get anything for myself that I say I want. You got to take care of yourself first. So sometimes that means saying no to things or pushing them back or pushing them down the line. You got to evaluate these things. That's part of fighting. That's part of understanding your strategy. That's part of understanding how you win, picking the right battles to fight. Sometimes they're not worth it. And sometimes, yeah, you got to give in on that and rotate. It's like stocks that are not performing. You got to rotate them out unless it's part of your key holdings. And then if they're part of your key holdings, just hold them because they could be down right now, 10, 15%. But what did they do in the last five years? They were up 500%. Well, why are they down now? Maybe people are capitulating and selling because they've given up on the fight or they don't understand how to fight. Okay. So I just wanted to share with you guys this show today. Go back, sit down, look at your life, look at your strategy, look at your non-negotiables, the things that you say, I'm going to fight for. This is a standard in my life. You have to fight for your standards. Standards do not uphold themselves. You have to uphold your standards. And a lot of times you got to fight for these things. So I want you to get out there, sit down. Look at your life and figure out what it is that you have to fight for. So until next time, everybody, one, two, three, let's go fight. This is the podcastfactory.com.